Welcome to Comics Conversation, where I do my best to guide new Flash comic book readers to the sometimes confusing Flash reading order. In this video, I will be going over the different comic book collected edition formats. There are technically six different comic book formats, but five different collected edition formats, and I will be going over the differences in a little bit. I do first want to mention that obviously I have not uploaded a video in a while, and the reason for this is because I would write a little reference script in a day, record in a day, and edit in a day. I felt like that was not giving myself enough time, since in my opinion that ended up costing some of the quality in the videos, so I have been figuring out how I should give myself enough time to make sure I am uploading videos with more quality. And whether there ends up being a major improvement, I do not want to be rushing these videos. So the dates upcoming videos are uploaded may be a little bit further apart than before. Moving on with the video, the first comic book format is probably the most recognizable, being the single issue format. These comics contain about 23 to 26 pages of content. It depends on the publisher, but for Marvel and DC, the comic book titles they publish come out monthly. For a while, some titles were published every two weeks, at least from what I've heard, but recently they are now published monthly. Another thing to note with these single issues is that their prices increased. For a while they were $2.99, and sometimes $3.99 for the variant covers. I know it is not that much of a price increase, but when thinking of tax, it would come around $5 or so a month. Although it would be nice to be up to date with the series, I feel like it is worth waiting several months and getting the story in a collected edition. Now this next comic book is a collected edition, and it is usually referred to as a trade paperback or a softcover book. On average, these books usually do not collect more than 15 issues or less than 5 issues. I'm not sure about some of the other comic book titles, but in the case for Flash, uh, after 6 months or so, there is a trade paperback collecting the most recent issues. This means that if you are not willing to pay $5 a month to read the story, there is an alternative of waiting 6 months or so, and getting a trade paperback collecting the same story for about $15. The next collected edition format is the hardcover book. These books are basically the same as the softcover books, only that they have a hardcover cover. Something I do want to mention is that these books can have different types of binding. For instance, this hardcover book, The Life Story of the Flash, has glued binding, while The Flash, The Death of Iris West has sewn binding. This is where the pages of the book are directly glued to the spine of the book, while the sewn binding is when the pages are glued to a ribbon in the book, and this ribbon can open up and create an eye. These types of binding usually do not affect these smaller books, but when I go over some of the other formats, you can see how this might have an effect on the book. The benefits of purchasing a hardcover book is that the books will last longer, and if you ever want to, it will make selling the books a lot easier since the books would stay in better condition than a soft cover. Another collected edition format is the deluxe edition hardcover. These books are larger than the hardcovers, soft covers, and the single issues. This means that the length and width of the deluxe editions are larger than the standard size books. I have shown this in the overview for The Flash by Jeff Johns Part 1 video, but as you can see, compared next to a single issue, these books are larger than it. These books often have sewn binding, but again, because of the length of the book, they are not really affected by the binding they have. When purchasing deluxe edition hardcovers, make sure it is an oversized hardcover. I am saying this because there is a Marvel book that is the Infinity Gauntlet deluxe edition, and some people might think that it is an oversized hardcover, but it is a standard sized softcover. The reason it is called a deluxe edition is because it has extras at the end of the book, but this could end up tricking some people into thinking they are buying something different than what they end up receiving. This is just something to keep in mind when purchasing books online. This collected edition format is known as an omnibus. These books usually contain between 25 to 66 issues in a book, with a few exceptions exceeding that number. These books are also oversized books, being larger than the standard size ones. Also, the majority of these books have sewn binding, and I will talk about the ones that do not in a little bit. For these larger books, the type of binding does matter. As you can see here, the binding for the Flashpoint Omnibus is sewn, and this is known as an eye. Gutter loss is a term used for when there are parts of images in the book that are lost in what is known as the gutter. Both Omnibus books of The Flash by Jeff Johns have sewn binding, but the amount of glue that was used to adhere the pages to the ribbon made it difficult for the eye to open up as much as the Flashpoint Omnibus. One major example of gutter loss is where the image of Flash's face is cut off in the center in the Flash Omnibus by Jeff Johns Volume 1. I mentioned before that the majority of Omnibus books have sewn binding, but there is at least one that has glued binding. Although sewn binding does use glue, glued binding is different. As I said before, this is where the pages of the book are glued directly to the spine. This type of binding can cause the most gutter loss, and the book has no eye. The only omnibus that I know that was published by DC with glued binding is the Infinite Crisis Omnibus. 
Keep in mind that I am talking about the first printing of the Infinite Crisis Omnibus, and that DC later released several reprintings of the book where they have sewn binding. I bring this up because this caused gutter loss and eventually led to the spine bending with the pages as it opened up, and I would guess this would also damage the book. Since I have the fourth printing of the book, I'm not sure what damage the glued binding could have caused for the book. The final collected edition format is the Absolute Edition. Now I have seen some other ridiculously large formats that put the Absolute Edition to shame, but on average, this is the largest format that you can find for a comic book. I do not own any Absolute Editions, since personally for me, my favorite format is the Omnibus format, and I have no need for the page dimensions to be any larger, so I cannot show you the difference in size compared to the other editions. I do want to say that the absolutes never get to the length of omnibus books, and they are more just oversized hardcover books. They often contain 5 to 15 issues. Now going into the next segment of the video, I will be going into how I was able to get the majority of the comics I have. I know how comics can be pretty expensive, especially when looking at all of the books on the Flash Free Order list. The reason I bring this up is because I want to let you know about this one website that I used to purchase the majority of my comics. It is called Cheap Graphic Novels, and it is a website that I have been using for about a year now. It sells new graphic novels for around 40-50% to 50 off the retail price, and if you scroll through the bargain bin, some of the titles can go up to 90% off. For example, when looking up the Flash by Mark Wade books, you can see the prices they sell them at, and for instance, here is uh, the Flash by Mark Wade book 1, $20, the retail price is $34.99. They have the Flash by Mark Wade book 1, as well as book two, three, four, five. They are out of stock for books six and eight, but if you add them to your wish list, you will get notified when they come back in stock. And they also have book seven. It might sound too good to be true, and there really is only one quote unquote downside, which I will say in a second. But another thing to note is that they ship their orders really securely, and they have met and exceeded my standards each time I receive one of my orders. When I have told others about the website, they said it sounds like I am sponsored or something, but these are just words from a satisfied customer that wants to give them more business. Now going over their one downside, which personally for me I think is a fair trade-off, but I am talking about the time it takes for the package to arrive from you from when they ship your order. Now it can vary from where you live and your order, but it usually takes two weeks for the order to arrive. But like I was saying, saving 40% on comics instead of paying full price and getting it next day off Amazon is a lot better in my opinion. The last thing I want to mention about cheap graphic novels is that if you do decide to place an order off the website, I would suggest having at least a couple things in your cart when ordering. This is because you do not have to worry about being charged tax, but there is a flat $8 shipping fee. And keep in mind, it is $8 no matter how large your order is, so it would be better to have several items in your cart instead of placing individual orders for each item. I also want to mention, just to clarify, that if you ever get a chance, do help support your local comic book shop by getting some comics from there. And the only other reason I am suggesting that you check out Cheap Craft Novels is that it is also a small business and not some big company like Amazon. But that wraps up this video. I have recently received the Flash The Death of Iris West hardcover book, and I have been reading it, so once I am finished reading it, I will have a video in the future doing a review of the book. Another possible future video could be a video of my thoughts of the upcoming movie for The Flash coming out in 2022, as well as giving some suggested reading that I think could help you possibly notice any easter eggs or references in the movie to the comics. Let me know which of the two you would prefer to see sooner in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next video.